So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to pass everything that we're going to go out today and drop off of the roof. And you're going to feel them in your hands. These kids are 10 years old, and I'm trying to teach them something like gravity. Well, gravity isn't easy to learn about, but I'm teaching them about gravity and not just read about it, but understand it and duplicate it. Can you duplicate what gravity is? That's a powerful idea. And let's very quickly just pass it around to a few of you. Get a feel for how heavy. So I brought um, objects to school. I had a shot put ball. I had a drilled out shot put ball, a sponge ball, an apple, um, a croquet ball. And I passed them around and let the kids feel them. Well, the shot put ball is very heavy and very dense. And it, you know, they could barely hold it in one hand. Doing it. Whoa. <laughs> and on this piece of paper, I want you to tell me which one you think from the choices, from one being the fastest, five being the slowest, if, in fact, you think that one of these is going to fall faster or slower than any of the other They ones. guessed about what objects would fall faster simply because of the way. This is definitely going to fall. Well, the kids, of course, all picked the shot put ball because of its weight. Let's try. And we wanted the kids to look at it and see what they saw and discovered about it. So we went outside, we had it arranged with our custodian, and he climbed up on the roof, and we dropped the ball so the kids could see which would fall to the earth faster, or not, whatever the case may be. So if you're my timers, you have to, the moment he drops the ball, you have to hit start. When it hits the ground, you have to hit stop. Then you're going to take that time and tell your recorder what the time was, and your recorder's going to write it down for you. All right, now timers, you've got to be really quick on the finger. The, mo the moment he lets it go, you're going to start your time. All right? Drop. The kids were, you know, recording what they were seeing, and um, we dropped everything. And some of the, you know, the apples burst, and the kids got a real big kick out of there. They were laughing and cracking up. Drop. The same time. Yes. Kids were, you know, recording what they were seeing, and we videoed it so we could play with the actual footage of the film. Thank you, Michael. When we all got up, we came into the classroom because we were going to put our information in Squeak and, and look at what we had done. And uh, I looked at him. One of my little children was still out there, and he was sitting there, this little pad of paper, and he was just writing notes. He didn't want to forget anything that he had seen, so he could gather all this information. When he comes back into the classroom, he, it was important to him to have it all so he could put it into the computer. Once inside, BJ replays the video. And I'm going to run it, and we're going to see if what we thought we saw with our eyes really happened. I can run it. This leads to a powerful observation about slower. gravity. Gravity pulls everything not harder, but like the same strength. Next, BJ puts the film clips into Squeak and breaks down the motion into small segments. We've broken it up into six little frames. Each one of these represents a portion of a second. You're going to see if you can measure for me the distance between the balls and what's actually happening. She demonstrates what she'll ask them to do. Okay, those are all the clues you get. Go to work. Then sends the children off to their computers to look at this individually. Keep in mind here, the children have already learned about movement, speed, increased by, acceleration, and measurement in their drive a car project. First, she asks them to recreate the stacked film clips to really understand what they're seeing. After they've cut and pasted the frames to make the ball dropping graphic, then BJ asks them to measure the dropping distance by creating rectangles. We had to get rectangles out of the supplies bin, and we measured the distance between one ball and another. And to make sure that I was doing it just right. I got a magnifier, which would help me figure out if the size was just right. After I'd done that, I would go and click on the little basic category button, and then a little menu would pop up, and one of the categories would be geometry, so I click on that. And here it has 
many things that have to do with the size and shape of the rectangle. So I would see what the height is. Now, my challenge to you is, I want to know what the difference is in the rectangles. Any ideas? And I kept going along the process until I had them all lined up with their height. I subtracted the smaller one's height from the bigger one to see if there was a kind of pattern anywhere that could help me out. The kids notice that the rectangles are getting longer, and they discuss this. What do you notice about the balls, Talia? That they're accelerating. How can you tell that? Because each ball, at first, it's kind of close together, and then it starts getting farther and farther and farther apart. To cement this learning, BJ now asks them to make their own ball and make it drop like the real ball in the video. Now the challenge is to connect what they've learned about speed and acceleration from driving the car on its x-axis to the falling ball on its y-axis. BJ gives them a hint. Because When we did this with the car, our car was going a special direction that our ball is not going. What axis were we talking to, Joey? We were talking to the X, but what are we going to talk to in order to do the ball drop? Max? We're going to talk to the Ys. We're going to talk to the Ys. And since everything in Squeak is an object, they write a simple script to make their ball fall moving in the Y axis. Then they add in the idea of acceleration. We got out the ball's Y and the ball speed increasing by. And once we got those, we had to figure out how much the ball has to increase by. Because if you just choose any numbers, it might not go as fast as the ball would. And my best guess worked. So in order to show that it was working, I decided to leave a dot copy so that it would show that the ball was going at the exact right speed and acceleration. And once the balls fall the same, they've successfully simulated gravity. I will tell you, if it wasn't for Squeak, I could never have done half of the math and science projects that I've been doing with my kids because it's not the same thing as giving somebody a formula. Okay, this is gravity, this is this. I am, it allows them to create something in which they have to use the concept to get the idea. <laughs>